it leads them into a feedback loop where they continue to recruit from that same small pool of people. I'm Dennis Mitchell, the CEO and CIO of Starlight Capital. No, I, I think if you look at the composition of boards in Canada, if you look at the composition of C-suite and senior executives at large organizations, you'll see that diversity still hasn't taken hold. I think what Bay Street needs is something like the Rooney Rule in football, where all NFL teams have to interview minority candidates for head coaching jobs and for senior football operations jobs. I think because the large organizations in Canada like to promote from within, this would force them to recruit minorities into middle level jobs, it would force them to mentor them, to put them on the track towards senior leadership so that they have a viable pool of candidates to you know, promote into those senior level executive roles. I think that would go a long way towards breaking up the old boys network. I think the, the best way to measure workforce diversity is the simplest way. What does your, your client base look like? What does the community that you operate in look like? And I think if you believe in the central premise of a diverse workforce is a more efficient, more productive workforce, then I think if you align your workforce to make it look like the communities you operate in, I think by default, you should end up with a more efficient, more productive workforce. I think it's both. I think they reinforce each other. I think when you look at the senior leadership rank of the large organizations in Canada, they're overly represented by one gender and one ethnicity. And because they're generally large and successful organizations, it leads them into a feedback loop where they continue to recruit from that same small pool of people. And so those populations that get marginalized by this process, they have fewer ladders to pull them up from, say, lower class to middle class or middle class to upper class. And it creates a, a feedback loop in terms of systematic bias that leads to socioeconomic disadvantage. So I think it's a little of both. Business is a series of optimizations, right? Do we have the right people, the right strategy, the right partners, advisors, and so on and so forth? So if you believe in the central premise that a diverse workforce is able to come at problems from more angles and able to solve them more efficiently, then I think the central premise means that businesses will be able to optimize their strategic planning, their problem solving, their goal setting. And as a result, you should end up with a more diverse, more productive, more efficient workforce. And that spills into a number of efficiencies and a number of improvements across all areas of business. One of the best measures of success is employee engagement. I mean, when you've got a, a workforce that does, isn't diverse and doesn't reflect the community, you get pockets of marginalized employees who aren't engaged and aren't on the same page as the organization as a whole. So I think one of the best measures of your success in promoting a diverse workforce is the level of employee engagement.